Uh oh, look out, a content warning. This video is about a fascist movement that is committing all sorts of terrorist acts and violence, so just be aware, it's probably not gonna be a chill video. Maybe if, maybe, if the, maybe if those types of things upset you, like more than the normal amount that they upset everyone, then, then it's, it's not a good video to watch for you, is my advice as the guy who made it. Fascists, God's greatest mistake. We talk about them a lot on the left and tend to paint with a pretty broad brush. We like to think of all fascists as thinking the same, behaving the same, and more or less being simple to recognize. It's ironic, given the fascist tendency to despise diversity, that there's a wide-ranging diversity of thought among different fascist groups. If we expect all fascists to act alike, that allows fascists that act differently to operate unnoticed. Welcome to Know Your Fash, where we take a closer look at a specific group of fascists to see what makes them goose step. It's my hope that by shining a light on these creeps, we can understand why they think the way they do and why they operate the way they do a little better so that we're more equipped to fight them and anyone else they inspire. You know, researching far-right extremist groups can be a difficult process sometimes. Often, they go to great lengths to hide their intentions or beliefs. This helps them attract normies and avoid being kicked off of social media platforms where expressing themselves more clearly would violate community guidelines. And that has a tendency to shield them from criticism because the dangerous or hateful things they do and believe are often not the things that the public sees. Those things are carefully hidden away, giving them plausible deniability which their gormless defenders will pounce upon. In my comments section. Also. Sometimes the thing they do is when you spend a week researching a group of far-right extremists, a bunch of far-right extremists might storm the Capitol building of Washington, D.C. and recontextualize everything you wrote in a way that your video, at this point, cannot meaningfully address. That's another danger you face. You've likely heard a lot of conflicting information about the subject of today's video, the Boogaloo Movement, or Boogaloo Boys. You've maybe heard that they're more aligned with left-wing extremists than right-wing ones, a popular bit of complete nonsense that right-wingers often pretend to believe whenever one of them does a terrorism. Let's just put a pin in that discussion for now. We'll come back to it. At first blush, this whole thing seems like just one big shit post, the same type of insular nonsense meme that the online right loves to weaponize, like honklers or wojacks or what am I doing with my life that I know what these things are? They wear Hawaiian shirts because that's what you wear to a big luau, get it? They put a big igloo on their flag. It's, they're all in the, it's, we're the, it's the ice house, everybody. LOL, it's all just jokes and none of it is a transparent attempt to disguise their iconography so that it bypasses restrictions put on them by social media platforms whose guidelines on hate speech and, and inciting violence they might violate. Oh, also, another thing about them that you should know is that they're gathering firearms and munitions and training for a violent overthrow of the United States federal government. <coughs> Clearing the air about them is difficult, because unlike a traditional fascist movement, the Boogaloo Boys are a decentralized quasi-militia composed of a lot of different groups. Not all of them are openly white supremacist, and some of them have attempted to express their support for Black Lives Matter, for example. The degree to which this support should be taken at face value is dubious, but we should be careful not to just make generalizations about them. What is clear, though, is that there are enough openly white supremacist and neo-Nazi boogaloo boys that the less radicalized members effectively provide cover for the more radicalized. This muddying of the waters allows them to operate more openly and retreat behind the confusion that the inconsistencies among their beliefs provide. Uh, okay, so in 1984, the film Break Into Electric Boogaloo was released, and yes, somehow, despite all odds, this is relevant information. The film is about a trio of breakdancers trying to save their local rec center from a greedy land developer, and the title references a form of funk dance called Boogaloo. But it's worth noting also that the producers of the film, Yoram Globus and Menahan Golan, just liked the word Boogaloo, like the villain of the film The Apple was named Mr. Boogaloo seemingly for no reason, which I mention just so that I can show you what Mr. Boogaloo looks like. It's a very silly word and a very funny subtitle. It's a meme online to refer to the second of everything as that thing too, electric boogaloo. While I personally maintain that it's funnier to say that thing, Tokyo Drift. You, you've definitely heard the joke before. It's 
completely played out at this point. You'd have to be a completely humorless lummox to still think it's funny. So naturally, far-right extremists eat that shit up. The boogaloo they're referring to, depending on who you ask, is either a reference to a second civil war or a second American revolution, i.e. Civil War II, Electric Boogaloo. That's not to say that they necessarily want to spark a second civil war or revolution, though, to be clear, many of them certainly do, but that they wish to prepare for one which they view as inevitable and fast approaching. Whether or not such a state of affairs is desirable is a subject of much debate in the Boogaloo community. The cause of the conflict, however, not so much. Their belief is that the American federal government will, at some point, attempt to seize all firearms from the population, which will lead inevitably to civil unrest and likely the complete breakdown of the social order, which it probably would, which is why the American federal government is probably not ever going to do that. That's, it, it's kind of a wild fantasy. There's, there's more guns than people in the United States, like Jill. It's, they're not, they're not going to take your guns. This obsession with guns being taken away should not be surprising, given that the Boogaloo movement largely developed on 4chan's K-board, which is a subform dedicated to weapons and firearms. The culture of K reflects the nebulous politics of the Boogaloo movement. Unlike most of 4chan, where the far-right ideologues tend to dominate discussion, K at least attempts to remain apolitical. Robert Evans and Jason Wilson of Bellingcat write, K is hardly a bastion of sweetness and light. Like all 4chan boards, it is littered with every imaginable slur. But unlike Pohl, militant white nationalism is not the default ideological position. Although gun owners tend to lean right, the board explicitly discourages any political discussion. A sticky post at the top of the forum, made in October 2015, just as the alt-right culture born on Pohl was turbocharging the Trump campaign, warns that discussions of politics even gun control are unwelcome. Similarly, the Boogaloo movement isn't really united politically aside from a general enthusiasm for gun ownership and a tendency to skew to the very far right. To call it a movement almost seems like a stretch, to be honest. It's more like a meme around which other movements tend to galvanize. All of whom are far-right extremists, to be clear. A lot of people are invested in pretending like they're not. Like, for example, the Department of Homeland Security, who claimed in a tweet rebuking Politico that the Boogaloo movement is neither left-wing or right-wing, but consisted of members from both ends of the political spectrum. They went on to say that this is precisely why the mainstream media is losing credibility with the vast majority of Americans, which ought to give you a pretty clear picture of where the DHS's ideological sympathies lie in the matter. That's not the type of thing that a Department of Government should be editorializing about in a tweet. The DHS is wrong, according to experts, however. According to a write-up in The Guardian, one CNN article on Boogaloo supporters at protests included an interview with a man who claimed to be a left anarchist. I pause here to note that you can claim to be anything. I, I hereby claim to be an astronaut. And also, that is the king of all anarchists, a thing that it makes sense to be, and also, I have always been, that I hereby declare that it's total malarkey for any anarchist to be associated with these clowns. But extremism experts agree that Boogaloo ideology overall is, in fact, right-wing. How do they know? For one, they look at images of the Boogaloo flag, which is sometimes emblazoned with the names of right-wing anti-government martyrs, including Americans killed in infamous standoffs with the police at Ruby Ridge in 1992 and during the occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge in 2016. The way we know the Boogaloo movement is a far-right movement is because they draw a line directly from Waco and Ruby Ridge, said Alex Newhouse, a digital researcher at the Center on Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism at Middlebury Institute for International Studies. They hold up things like the McVeigh bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building and the armed response to Ruby Ridge as heroic moments in American history where citizens stood up to government oppression, Newhouse said. Another clear sign that the Boogaloo Boys are right-wing is their decision to show up with guns to guard private businesses, first during demonstrations against public health shutdown restrictions, and later during the protests over George Floyd's killing, Newhouse said. While Boogaloo supporters showed up to George Floyd protests saying they wanted to stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter protesters against police violence, some also described going to protests to, quote, defend businesses, including big national corporations, against looters and destruction, end quote. 
Showing up with guns to protect big corporations from property damage is not something that most left-wing protesters would do, Newhouse said, since leftists would be more likely to view corporate stores such as Hobby Lobby as part and parcel of capitalist exploitation. Now, in a sensible world, I shouldn't have to explain to people that the Second Amendment extremists that hang out with a bunch of literal, actual, self-identified neo-Nazis are right-wing extremists. I should not need to take time out of this video to make clear to you that, that they're right-wing. But alas, the media and public education system have done such a bad job of explaining these ideas to people that a lot of bad actors can exploit the confusion, like Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz did, for example. Also Trump. While it would be preposterous to sit here and tell you that each and every person in a Boogaloo Facebook group or Discord channel or parlor circle jerk or card-carrying white nationalists it is like so many other things in our increasingly inscrutable culture, a red flag that they might be. They might be that thing. The Boogaloo meme represents a common language among the far right, allowing for cross-pollination of differing groups and ideologies. It presents an opportunity to further radicalize people of various different beliefs and incite violence against the government and law enforcement. And if you just said based out loud when I said that, you might want to reconsider. This cross-pollination allows fascist militias like the Three Percenters and hardcore neo-Nazi accelerationists like the base to preach their gospel out in the open and share tactics with whatever bumblefuck libertarians or anti-lockdown rubes are credulous enough to think it's all a big joke. All of these groups share Boogaloo memes, and it's not unusual to see Boogaloo patches on the jackets of people wearing the skull bandana, a symbol of Atomwaffen, the neo-Nazi terrorist organization dedicated to overthrowing the United States government with nukes if necessary. It's not hard to see why the Boogaloo meme would suit their interests. And while I use the word meme, that isn't to excuse the real-world consequences of its popularization. Among other incidents, Boog boy Steve Carrillo killed a Federal Protective Service officer in Oakland, and a Santa Cruz County deputy wrote the word boog in his blood, which the Trump administration tried to tie to the protests against the murder of George Floyd and claimed it was the work of radical leftists based on, yeah, let me check my notes here. Well, what did they base that on? Nothing. They wasn't and they weren't. Speaking of, though, during those very same protests, three Boog boys were arrested on terrorism charges for, allegedly, creating a bunch of Molotovs with the intention of exploding a bunch of shit. In case you're tempted to think that they were in support of Black Lives Matter or whatever, and this is just, you know, further evidence that Black Lives Matter is, is a violent terrorist organization, keep in mind that this was simply an opportunistic last-minute change of plans. The Associated Press writes, Loomis stated he wanted to firebomb a power substation, according to the informant in the criminal complaint. But on May 28th, Linham instructed the group to observe the riots occurring nationwide and use that momentum as a driving force to possibly take action against a fee station at Lake Mead on federal land north of the Hoover Dam. On May 30th, other targets discussed included a U.S. Forest Service ranger station, the complaint said. The informant stated that Partial and Loomis's idea behind the explosion was to hopefully create civil unrest and rioting throughout Las Vegas. Perhaps most famously, 13 members of a militia group called... <sighs> the Wolverine Watchmen, who were all, of course, big-time boogheads, were arrested by the FBI for, allegedly, plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and overthrow the state government. The criminal complaint against them states, On July 27, 2020, a confidential informant met Adam Fox at his business in Grand Rapids. The confidential informant provided the FBI with an audio recording of the meeting. Fox said their best opportunity to abduct Governor Whitmer would be when she was arriving at or leaving either her personal vacation home or the governor's official summer residence. Both residences are located in the Western District of Michigan. Fox described it as a snatch and grab man, grab the fucking governor, just grab the bitch, because at that point, we do that, dude, it's over. Fox said that after kidnapping the governor, the group would remove her to a secure location in Wisconsin for trial. You know, one of those trials that you hold for someone that you've already decided has committed a bunch of crimes that you also imagined. That ought to go well for her. I'm sure she'd be entitled to a vociferous defense. That's how you fight tyranny, everybody, is you get a small group of people together and you decide that they're allowed to kill whoever they want and make all the rules. That's How else are you going to stop tyranny from happening? None of this 
is to say that any of these guys were radicalized by Boogaloo memes or whatever. Radicalization doesn't work like that. It's not as though there's one meme that's going to push an otherwise normal person over the edge into an extremist. What I'm trying to drill into your head is that when people make or share Boogaloo memes, when they have Boog patches on their jackets, when they wave a flag with a big igloo on it, and stripes that symbolize everyone murdered by the state from Eric Garner to people killed in Waco as though those things are equivalent, you should take them at their word. They believe, at best, that civil war is inevitable, and they intend to be prepared to fight in it against you. At worst, they believe that it is their moral responsibility to make civil war inevitable, and that includes potential acts of terror and mass murder. They're saying it in a silly way, they're having a little fun with the fact that they want to commit horrific violence, but they're still saying it and doing it right now, out in the open. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, um, I'm not gonna uh, do an eyeball zone this week, uh, I know I haven't done one in a while. I'll get back to it, don't worry. Uh, I haven't escaped, no one escapes from the eyeball zone, whatever that is. I don't, I don't like to do them on these videos because oftentimes they tend to attract a certain amount of hate and death threats and I don't really want to expose someone to that who didn't sign up for it, so. I'm not just gonna throw someone under the bus like that. Anyway, if you liked the video, the, the, press the like button, please. I would appreciate that. Uh, you can also subscribe for more videos every Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to see more videos that I make that aren't like this, but are rather uh, about fictional horror rather than the real-life horror that I was talking about today, you, you can find those at youtube.com slash scaredycatstv where I upload a new video every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I also live stream once a week on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube and at twitch.tv slash thoughtslime is where I do that. And, and, and uh, I should also mention that I like getting money. And the main way that I do that is at patreon.com slash thoughtslime where people give me money. For this. For this. All right, you knuckleheads. Hey, look, <laughs> it's been a rough week. I mean, it didn't start off a rough week, right? It started off all right, and then it got it got real weird halfway through, huh? So take it easy. Go, go have a nice, crisp, ice-cold soda pop on me.